What's up, guys? It's Preachy. I'm on my own because Ghost is doing unspeakable things in my bathroom, but that's okay. Let me make sure I can see the chat. Come here, chat. Good, good, good. Holla ballers! Okay, so we're going to jump into some WoW stuff now. Um, I know a lot of you have been thinking about the new partner, because we went through a big bad week this week. In fact, on the IRL channel, I only did one video. And that was because of all the stuff I was doing in between the show, um, in between producing YouTube content. And it didn't help that the beta servers were off and online every couple of minutes. And they patched in so many changes that all the footage I had shot for our beta releases for this week was completely out of date. It was pointless to be releasing it to you. So, what I decided to do was not release that stuff and focus heavily on the back end of the YouTube stuff and the website and do all that kind of stuff. So, we're going to let you know, I know you've been waiting for it, what is our new partner? <laughs> I want. We're interested to see, what do you guys think it is? Who do you think the new partner is? I would love to know. Um, and I guess you, <laughs> the website is apparently up and down like an absolute yo-yo. Um, let me know who the new fucking, who you think it is. Wow, what have we got a lot of stuff there? Let's have a little quick look at the chat. We've got Cursed Machinima, Monster, CGS. Machinima, The Game Station, TGN, no. The majority seems... Hitler. The majority <laughs> say TGS. Brazzers. I would imagine if it was Brazzers. Yeah, the next one's going to be yeah. sponsored by Bang Bus. Oh, fuck yeah. Machinima, free t-shirts. <laughs> Uh, Brazzers, <laughs> hello Kitty, Fosters, that would be awesome as well. Good eye, mate. Good eye, mate. Oh, I can see you put up with the low quality website. <laughs> Spent all the money on the Ros Razor, uh, Brazzers, Monster, Blizzard, yeah, how you wish. PGN. PGN. <laughs> um, Fosters, yeah, no, we haven't got any beers tonight, have we? No, we haven't. Besides the scratch of it. Toys R Us, Game Away. Oh, oh Sparker! Ding! <laughs> Sparker with a fucking classy manoeuvre. That was awesome. Game Station, uh, Anne Summers, Athene Live, fucking hell. Oh, Untrill shouldn't be working on the site. Yeah. No breaks, fool. <laughs> Sparker, that was classy. Um, okay, without further ado, let's announce it and then I'll tell you the story about it happened. Which one is it? Um, press that one. Which no, one? up, press the speaker so we can have the sound. And then press the one. This is our low tech wiki. Pete. All my preparation has gone out the window. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to do it this way so they can't see it. <laughs> I love keeping it uh, low tech. Can you see it now? Make sure you turn the mic on when you come back. Right, cool. You fucking believe it, bros. We are signed with Curse Gaming. That is fucking right. We are signed with fucking Curse. And believe me, this was an awesome experience. And an experience is exactly what it was. It was incredible. It was a shame you weren't here because we had so much discussion to have with this subject. And Curse, I mean, we did have some choices this time, which was the strange thing is we actually had choices in who we wanted to go with. Because people were like, you guys are doing okay. Let's fucking talk. Let's do some fucking business. Um, and we, we spoke to Curse and they basically said, look, we're interested. We want to talk to you guys. We're happy with what you're doing. Why do you want to be with us? Because I basically said, you've thought about it, we've come to a decision, we want to go with you guys. And they were like, okay, we're happy with that because you know we've spoke to you and stuff. Why? Why do you want to go with us? And I said, I cannot think of a company that better represents what we do than Curse Gaming. Mm. I can't think of anybody better. The Game Station, sure they're bigger. Machinima, sure they're bigger, but I've got horrendous contracts. 
there's uh, Yosh are out there as well. We spoke to them. We even spoke to Skill Cat, uh, people like that. And Curse just seemed so right. So you might even see pretty shortly, guys, is my wild guides on a little site called MMO Champion, which are also part of Curse Gaming. Um, Curse are obviously sending representatives out across the world. I'm sure you've all seen Pico. She's out across the world. You know, maybe there's going to be a little bit of an introduction to a couple of other guests. Watch this space. You might see Preachy Ghosty visiting some big events in your area of the world, guys. The resident cursed troll. The resident cursed. I'm going to get a business card that says the resident cursed troll. Uh, will you do me a favour? Will you find the tweet address for the place? <sighs> we were supposed to do it before the show and I totally forgot. The tweet address for Curse? Yeah. How do you mean? Just oh, their, their Twitter account. account. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you the story what happened, guys. Now, if any of you, I know a lot of you are actually up and coming young YouTubers. Um, and there's some other people who've been doing YouTube for a long time, um, but have been basically doing it as a bit of a hobby. They release a video every now and then, and they're looking to see how can we get into this sort of area and stuff like that. So I'm going to tell you the full story, guys, and then we're going to talk about some gaming stuff. And this is for you guys to understand how this system works. When you're small, when you're really small, maybe one, two K subscribers, and you're looking to that point where you're going to get subscribed to a partner, and you maybe start earning some revenue, beyond the basic Google AdSense and all that kind of stuff, and you're thinking, wow, I can make some money from YouTube. Now, we knew we weren't going to get anything from YouTube. We were fully aware of that for a long, long time. There we go. Um, Dollars drainage, but it's just simply at Curse Gaming. If you all guys could case, do us all a, one word. If you guys could do us a huge favour, just tweet at Curse Gaming. If you have a Twitter account, if you don't, don't, don't mind. If you could just thank them for giving us the okay. Just thanks from Mike PreachWow, or thanks from a subscriber of Mike PreachWow, for adding us to their network, just something like that, to at Curse Gaming, if you just tweet them and let them know, because they've been so helpful, and I'll tell you why shortly, uh, if you could just tweet them and say thank you very much uh, for partnering or, you know, for joining Mike Preach Wild, that would be awesome, if you could just do that for us guys, that would be really helpful Let's to us. Let's up to it, mate. Yeah, this is a big move for us, a really huge, momentous occasion, and I know we've got the website this week and this stuff, but this is awesome for us, it really is. Uh, in the next three months or so, we should, op we should hopefully see some big changes on the channel because of this. Uh, and the, the thing was, they wanted to put up a... I'll tell you the story anyway. Uh, I tried to get released from TGN. Was it the last web show we just said we were doing it? It was the last web show where we said that we uh, have left. We have left TGN. So I told you on the last web show we've left TGN because of all the problems they were causing us. Horrendous problems. Um, Nothing wrong with the TGN system, except the back end, the administration side of sorting things out was an absolute mess, and still is to this day. And I don't like that. I basically have a three strikes rule. We talked about it on the web show, on the story time with Preach. I have a three strikes rule. Third time, it's game over. And they, they struck out three times with us and fucked us over three times. In ways we felt really fucked over, yeah? But very, 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 very bad business-like strikeouts as yeah, well. Yeah, very bad business-like. Yeah, it was. So we guess, I emailed... Um, the top guys at, Kurt, at TGN said, look, we're leaving, we're done with you, we've had enough, you've had, you know, we give you every chance under the sun, we're not happy, please release us. And I heard nothing back until I got an, a Skype message that said, okay, look, I'm sorting it out for you, Preach, uh, I'll get you guys released as soon as possible. Um, this story is just so you guys know what happens in the world of the back end of YouTube, if you're up and coming. Um, and we were like, okay, that's fine. And they sent us a message saying, look, we put the process underway. It's going to take 20 days. At the same time, I'm talking to Curse. Uh, I was in negotiations with Curse. I was speaking to them. And they were like, we want to partner you now. We want to get a video out showing you're part of our network. We've got a big partner video that we want to put out there. We want to get you guys on it just to show you guys are now part of the team. Show me this. It makes no difference, but you can go ahead. Um, and do all that kind of stuff. So we were like, okay, but I'm not actually partnered with you yet. This is why we didn't want to release anything until we were actually signed and done. We didn't want to tell you guys anything because anything could have happened in that time. Um, TGN never came back to me for about 16 days with any information, but they did kick me out of the Skype director's conversation. They kicked me out of the other conversations involving TGN directors. They effectively severed their ties at their end. They said, right, you're leaving, get out. And they just removed me. I was just like, Preacher's been removed. Preacher's been removed from all the TGM conversations. And I was fine with that. I was done with TGM. I wasn't posting anything there. Uh, they said, up until you're released, uh, continue to claim your videos and we'll make sure that you're still getting paid something. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, 16 days in, Curse contacted me again. Like, guys, can we do something? And I said, well, I haven't heard back from TGM, but they did say it'd be 20 days. So they were like, okay, it might be worth just giving them a chase. So... 
I contacted somebody who was personally on my Skype. I'd been kicked out of the conversations. I said, yo, can you just give me an update on where we are? And then I got added by a guy who had no idea who he was, but he had a TGM branded name on Skype. I just had this contact request. So I accepted it. And then while I was online, this guy just suddenly appeared online, pasted me a message, and then instantly disconnected or blocked me, something like that. Instantly just disconnected. And the message was, oh, sorry, TGN are inept. Uh, I can see why you left. Ha ha. By the way, we haven't even started the process of releasing you from TGN yet. It's nothing to do with me. I'm just passing you on the news. I'm just logged off so I couldn't reply. And I was so infuriated. I was like, what kind of business is this? How can you do that? Um, who, who is this guy? Why are you sending me these messages? And it was then reiterated by the channel manager, Adam, who's really nice at TGM. Wow, Adam Loudcast, really good. He sent me the same message. I was like, what's going on? But he hadn't been on, he logged off almost immediately as well. I was left in the dark. So I spoke to Curse, and this is when I really felt like this is the right choice for us. Curse just said, don't worry about it. When that 20 days is up, we will get involved. And I was like, that's <laughs> nice. That's the security, though. You never had any sort I mean, even before you're with Curse, they're reassuring you. It's like, dude, we've got you back. Yeah. They're not going to fuck you over because it, you're now in like an investment to them. Well, it was just, well, we are. Well, okay. We are. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, even before you are with them, they're saying you're not about to be fucked over. Yeah, absolutely. They just said, don't worry about it. When this 20 days is up, we'll get involved. And I was like, awesome. That is yeah. so much better. But they said, you might want to send them away. So I turned on my business side, which is what I do during the day. And I sent the big legit email to Russ George. Emerald, I turned Russ Emerald on it. I sent an email to George, the head of TGN, the CEO of TGN. And the HR people said, I'm so disappointed in the way this is being handled. Please do something immediately. 25 minutes later, and I mentioned in the email that if they don't do anything about this immediately, then my new partner will get involved legally. 25 minutes later, no shit, from Canada, I got an email from the same guy who sent me the original Skype message saying, Hi Mike, you are now unpartnered from TGN. I was like, why the fuck did you tell me it would take 20 days? And you've just done it in 25 minutes. You fucking bullshitters. And in between this time, they had offered us more money and stuff to stay. Uh, and I was like, no, no, you know, we've had enough, we've done. So it legitimately, they were just holding on to keeping us yeah. to try and convince us to stay. Maybe it'll blow over, that kind of thing. But it wasn't that. We were like, no, we're fucking leaving. Um, <laughs> so I contacted Curse. This is where it gets really evil, guys. And you want to be careful about this kind of stuff. And it's not just TGM. Other companies will do this to you as well. Is I contacted Curse said, yo, I'm unpartnered. They said, can you send us an email just to confirm it before we do all the process with you and sign your contract? I was like, yeah, sure. Forwarded in the email. Preach, you are now un unpartnered. And they were like, awesome. Thank God for that. And then they slagged me off for using Internet Explorer, which is when I knew that the other person was a gamer, yeah. which made me feel comfortable again. He was like, oh, this is great, all business type. And then he went, wait a minute, dude, bro, Internet Explorer? <laughs> Ruffle. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I was on my work's laptop and I do use IE sometimes. They were like, what the fuck? And then <laughs> the best thing that happened next is Curse goes, okay, now we deal directly with YouTube, which TGM don't. You deal with other people at TGM. They said, we need you to contact a guy called... Uh, forget his name, at YouTube.com. Right. Directly to YouTube in California. Uh, we copy us in. They know about us. We're directly contacted with Curse. Uh, Curse and YouTube are a big partner. Can you sort that out? So do this email, copy us in. Did that. And it was Friday while you were away. So I wasn't expecting anything back till at least Monday. But lo and behold, Monday morning, 7 a.m., I woke up. I had an email back from Curse. You are still partnered with TGM. We can't do anything. I woke up to this message, it was 6, 7 a.m., I woke up on Monday morning, looked at my phone, which I do every day because I have all emails from you guys and stuff, um, and I opened it up, because it's a great way to start the day, because a lot of the great emails you guys send me, or Brofist and stuff, I wake up first thing, I'm like, ah, you know, that's funny, cheeseburger hat, or naked guy with a candle on his head, <laughs> you know, that's what I wake up to in the morning, I was like, oh, that's funny, uh, so I checked uh, my phone, I had this email from YouTube, I was like, oh, cool, Check, well, checked in, they said, you are still partnered with TGM. What TGN had done, no bullshit, is literally removed all the monetization from my channel and not unpartnered me. So I legitimately had stopped earning any revenue of the $50 they were sending us a month. <laughs> the, you know, the, the spit they were sending us, they'd stopped giving us the spit and just shit on us at the back end because we couldn't get partnered again either. So they just said, oh, well, we're not going to give you any of the fucking pittance money that we send you guys. 
but we are also going to make sure you cannot be partnered either. And I was like, what the fuck? So I, I replied to the YouTube guy. I said, I forwarded an email. I said, look, this is the email I've had from TGN. I've been unpartnered. They've sent me an email saying you are now unpartnered. What's going on? He replied back saying, I, hi, hi, Mike. After uh, Within the last 30 seconds, this has been four or five days since I've been released from TGN. Uh, it was Tuesday he replied to me. I, he said, as of 30 seconds ago, you were still partnered with TGN. There's nothing we can do. And I was just like... And I felt myself becoming business angry. Yeah. yeah. Not like emotionally angry, just like, I'm, this is going to get really dirty. So I spoke to Kurtz and they were like, don't worry about it. Forward that email to them, give them an hour. And I was like, I like the way this guy talks. <laughs> he was like, forward the email, give them an hour. I was like, okay. So I forwarded the email back to this guy saying, why am I not unpartnered? Copy George in the CEO again. Chief, you know, the CEO of TGN saying, what the hell is going on now? You've literally stripped my channel of earning any revenue. Uh, and we were getting something like half a million hits a month, which is quite large for YouTube, um, which is a lot of day. It's about 17, 18,000 people a day were checking the videos. And, you know, they, you've literally stripped the channel of earning any revenue whatsoever of the, the shit you were sending us and made it so I can't get partnered. What the hell is going on? This is really bad business practice. Right. 10 minutes later, this is what they said to me. I bullshit you not, guys. <laughs> And you, this is why you have to be up front and smashing these guys in the face every second. Email it back immediately. Because uh, this guy was obviously still at his uh, desk. Is, we have tried again. You should now be unpartnered. Like there's a fucking retry button unpartnering people. What? Who do you expect to believe that? We're computer nerds. We know there isn't a fucking retry button for something like that. Like, oh, this process has failed. Try again. If I had their sort of... Um responsibilities that's totally what i'd be doing well <laughs> i'd be trolling this shit yeah just try it now mate it might work now. <laughs> yeah have you tried turning it off and turning it back on yeah. again like youtube we try turning youtube off and on again maybe it'll work there. there a bit it's like refresh the page refresh the page yeah but then they sent me this email saying okay we tried it again it should now have worked i was like are you fucking kidding me who do you think you're talking to but i was like i'm not even replying to this dickhead i forwarded that off to youtube so I'm doing all these emails through the day where I'm supposed to be working on my day job, which is hard at the moment. I'm fucking producing YouTube content and doing all this. Busy as hell. Don't need this stress. I was actually on the, the Method team speak at the time. I was chatting to a couple of the guild members who were asking me because they're starting to get more interested in what I do. Um, and they were asking me questions and stuff. I said, well, this is the reality of it is you think that a channel, because it's got adverts, is making bank. Yeah. So it's not like that. There's no. no money in YouTube. You know what I mean? There's no money there. But, you know, you can get some. Or you can maybe buy a game at the end of the month or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is the real side of the stuff that goes on and they were like wow I'm fucking because you know, these guys were considering trying it as well and they were like well fuck that <laughs> I'm not going to do this shit uh, and literally the curse got back to, uh, YouTube got back to me straight away and he was like I've tried it you're clear tell you curse to do it and I spoke to curse was on YouTube I was like curse look this guy's told me everything's fine and it wasn't like TGN TGN took three months to partner us remember yeah, I remember that, yeah. We said, we're signed with TGN. We were really excited. We signed with the network. We're going to get partnered. This is really cool. We're going to get to be in front of 70,000 subscribers. We didn't know that 85% of TGN WoW's 70,000 subscribers is inactive. They don't watch any of the videos. They're old WoW players. Um, so they don't watch any of the videos. They have a high subscriber count, but nobody watches the videos. And <laughs> so we didn't know that either. We were really excited. Three months later, we got partnered. Curse partnered me within 10 minutes. The email came through on my YouTube saying you partner with Curse. And that was just such a glorious mo finale it's, to yeah. it. Well, that's what you need to watch for, guys. So but hardcore. The whole and then you were away, so I was yeah. like trying to update you via text as to what was happening. Which cost me a fucking dollar bill at it when I got oh, the bill it? this morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought it was Freeman's. It's, yeah, it's fine. No, I tried, I tried winging it, you know, where um, on the iPhones, if you're using Wi-Fi, it goes through iMessage. But that's totally different. But anyway, back on topic is... When we first started with TGM, because it was, it seemed very oh, cloak and dagger. Yeah. You know what I mean? It <laughs> seemed very cloak and dagger in terms of they don't show you statistics, figures, um, do this for us and you'll and we'll do this back. It was sort of like it, it was stringing you on, but on the same token, it was, you never liked TGM, did you? No, never, did, never, did. never did. But I mean, I was looking at. I wouldn't say competition because it's not you're on the same team. The other directors looking at their things and it was just like and, I, and it's not a bragging thing either but it's they see that the voice is very you know uh, 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 and it just didn't seem very not entertaining everybody. no but, that's what I mean not those everybody. are a lot of, what TGN seems to thrive off uh, from a business point of view is a couple of these companies are just view whores Machinima is a big one if you've got over I'm not joking when I was emailed every week from Machinima 
partner with us. Partner with us. We'll pay you loads of money. Uh, and the view hosts, they don't even check your channel. That's why the Reply Girls, if any of you are big fans of YouTube, you saw the Reply Girls, some of them were partnered with Machinima. And they were making nothing videos for 40 second videos going. And they have for watching videos. Have you seen the Reply Girls thing? Oh, do you know what? Just really quickly on that, it's a very short thing. Is the Reply Girls, the one of the main ones, is a picture of her with a massive set of tits and an arrow pointing out of tits. Yeah. One of the Reply Girls. You don't see anything like that. You know my motto, mate? Tits or get the fuck out. <laughs> I would legit listen to your yeah. bullshit if there was genuine that tits was it. involved. I don't care what you think of the video that someone posted. Shows your tits. <laughs> but that's it. No, carry on. Well, that's what they do. They were partnered with Machinima. Insane stuff. Uh, Machinima also signs you into a contract for a minimum six years. And then just buries you. They don't show any of your content whatsoever. Um, so it was, it was really... An eye-opening experience, it really was. And, and TGN tends to look for younger guys, around 15, 16 years old, who they convince, hey, we've got 70,000 subscribers, you'll get a dollar for every 1,000 views. So yeah. that's $70 per video. And they look for guys who are going to make a quick book. And they literally told me, in a this is what happened, and I'm not going to bullshit you. They have meetings with the directors every two weeks on Skype, where they get every director from all around the world, which was a real pain in the ass for me, because they would be at like 2 a.m. in the morning, so I just wouldn't show up, literally. I, I, did, I did one, and it was when I said, look, I'm not turning up to a meeting at 2 o'clock in the morning when I have work at 6. So that's not happening. Mm. And they were like, okay, we'll try and make it earlier. So they made it about 9 a.m., so I showed up for that one. And all they said is, guys, whoever has access to a beta account, which I did and Towley did, I think we're the only two, put out as many videos as humanly possible about beta. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's a minute long, it's three minutes long, doesn't matter what the subject is, Game just make sure it's a wow mop, a Mr. Pandaria beta video and flood them out as much as possible because all we want to do is make sure that when people search Mr. Pandaria beta, T, uh, TGM pops up. Yeah. That's all we want. So we don't care what your content is at all. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be you just leveling. That's what they said to us. It could just be you leveling. It could be you doing something. Just get videos out. And I was like, I'm not doing that. And they're like, why? You're the one of the guys with the beta accounts. I said, because that's fucking shit. That is awful. What are you saying to us? And it's just view whoring to try and get you guys to accidentally click adverts. That's all it is. And I was like, no, man, this isn't for me. That was strike number two when that meeting went on. I was like, fuck this. I said, I'm not spamming fucking videos out for the sake of it. For the sake of it. For the sake of views. Get it the gives you a personal channel a bad rep just to say that... Basically, once you start playing a game, you just hit record and spam it on. But that's not what you do, is it? Oh, can you imagine how trash those videos are? No, yeah. I didn't watch any of them. I was like, no way, I'm not doing that. And they were like, can we use your beta account? I was like, can you fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not using my fucking yeah. beta account. You can use it when you're hanging off the end of my cock with your face. <laughs> how about that? Well, overall, the guys at TGM were really nice. It was just the business yeah. end of it was really... I did not like it. Oh, yeah, it. that's it. I mean, like, I've, I've always had... I've never liked TGM, but... On the same token, there's a couple of guys like who, I mean, all the way through it, even if it's not business related, have been nice guys. I've not only that, we actually, I mean, we played a bit of a plan with TG with TGN. Is that we only put out videos that we thought would attract people to our channel because amongst all the youngsters and the PVP guys at TGN, we thought there might be one or two people out there who legitimately understand that the game isn't easy, that they're not the best players in the world, and accept that they could use some help. That's what we look for, is guys who realise and come to the, the decision that I could use some help to be better and the game is more fun when I'm playing better. Exactly. And try and get them all to our channel. So you watch any of our TGM videos, Mike Preach Wow is spammed in every single corner. And remember the first two minutes of every TGM video I did was, on the main channel today we covered this, this and this. Go and check it out. And when we stopped getting subscribers from there, that was our first strike. It was like, well... We've got a few hundred subscribers, and those have been great guys. I mean, we have had emails of guys who said, we watched TGN, we found you that way, and that worked out for us. And because Curse isn't like that. Curse doesn't have a big central network. They have the Curse Network channel, which I think has about 40,000 subscribers. Uh, but that's a culmination of everybody from all different games, and blah, 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 blah. And it, they, 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 I said to them, what do you expect from me? Because TGN expected a video a week at least, covered in their branding, their intro, their outro, and the guy at Curse was like, don't want any of that. And I was like, what? Just do what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, they said, just do what you're doing. What you're doing is perfectly fine. That's what we want. I said, so do you want me to put the Curse logo on any of the videos? I was like, no. That's it. Like, do you know what, mate? Everything that I've seen and heard from Curse ever since, ever since they've been in contact about partnership is, 
it's all reassuring but the main thing is I mean obviously you deal with it directly the main thing is at every turn they seem to have your back mm. they appreciate what you're doing for them that's the main thing of anything it was a very different experience from you need us which was the TGN is you need us to uh, yeah. anything uh, or to get your name out there amongst all the wow videos it was a change from that attitude to would you like to talk and that was a big change for us and we really liked it uh, so that was cool so we're going to be with curse and now you won't see any changes to the channel in terms of product because curse isn't like that we don't have to submit anything to curse or anything like that we will be appearing possibly on mmo champion we'll have to see how good the videos are and how good ent untrial is at editing them because they have to be quite high quality for mmo you're being watched untrial. being watched <laughs> um, but we'll definitely be with curse in terms of their main channel we're re re releasing like clips of the best parts of our shows all that kind of shit and it's just a great time it's a really great time well done. it's a it's a fortuitous experience it's really cool and the website's up as well so that's awesome as well so it's been a really fantastic week uh, and we just can't we all, I wanted to hit 9k subscribers before the show today I think we're about 10 short I want to check it now about 10 on the right short because that would have been just the big icing on the cake so it was fucking well good um, so it's so cool I, I hope you guys did uh, tweet them and just say thank you because they've been so supportive they were willing to help us out in a bad time all that kind of stuff so cool I bet we're just shy uh, uh, 9k no. top right oh, no, why is there a video of Hulk Hogan there's always a video of Hulk Hogan uh, my channel <laughs> there's always a video hey oh my god no we're not like 35 away from ah well we're close enough it would have been nice to hit it there but uh, what can you do uh, so what have we been doing in Wow while we've been away? I well, mean, quick, can I just on. jump in? Quick thing is, uh, there was a lot in the chat before about uh, Method, what's going on with Method. Oh, do you want to know about that now, guys? Yes. I, 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 I'm saying that now because there's a lot, there was a big, 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 big block of people asking what's going on with your trial and Method, so hit that first, I think. Um, well, I haven't, obviously we talked, if you guys joined for the story time with Preach that was last two weeks, we did that after the Dragon Soul versus Vodka raid, uh, which we won. Method one, which was fabulous. I don't know if you saw that, but it was three seconds at the end between us killing. There was a three second gap between Madness of Deathwing uh, falling for Method and Madness of Deathwing dying for vodka. Three seconds. And Method shouldn't have won. And I would have given my right testicle to have been casting that fucking race. Because my gear is too shit in Method at the moment to take them part. I've got no legendary. And in general, my gear is now item level of Firelands Heroic. So let alone Dragon Soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just hit 391, I think, which is Firelands Heroic. That's my gear. I, in fact, for the last four raids, I haven't had any gear whatsoever. Because um, I'm a trial. Like, even as it works in Method. Actually, I was talking to a guy about this, so I'll tell you a little bit about what it's like to be in Method as a trial. Um, is You have to appreciate at that level of raiding, especially when the content is clear, the members, and rightfully so, don't give a shit about your gear. And don't give a shit about gearing you up because we can easily clear the raid. Generally, we have somebody who's buying an item. Uh, they can clear it 20 man, the heroic Dragon Soul. Easy. They can clear it 20 man. So we bring a couple of buyers along. And you being in garbage gear doesn't mean a damn thing. Uh, they couldn't give a shit. So when like a trinket drops, like my trinkets are sort of like five man heroic trinkets. So you think in a sort of medium level guild, they'd be like, we need to give this guy some trinkets because we need him some gear. Not in method. It, like if a trinket drops, the healers will get it over me. In fact, the PvPers will get it over me. And rightfully so. They're the ones who've been clearing Dragon Soul probably, what, 16, 17 times? So as a trial, it's like, I need that. And a member might say, I need it for PvP. The member will get it. And that's cool. I mean, and some people were like, I was telling some guys in game, they were like, that's fucking ridiculous. I was like, no, that's right. Those guys have deserved that gear. They're the ones who clear. You see, you would be so fucking angry. You'd look at his face. You would never handle that. You'd be like... I wouldn't have the patience for that. I fucking nearly break things when I lose in a looking for raid. If that was the case, I need this for off spec PvP on an alt. But you've never been at that cutting edge. I find out where that person lives and kill them. Well, this is what I said to a couple of the guys who were asking me about this, and even the method guys who I was chatting with. It's like you're not. Uh, are you worried about your gear? I said, No, my gear is irrelevant. The new expansion's coming anyway. If it was a case of we were progressing, then I'd be pissed off. If I was in the main raid. And we were progressing, but the guild is smart enough to know if we need this guy in a progression raid, we need to be throwing gear at him. So if it was a like what happened in the, the main progression of Dragon Soul is suddenly Resto Shames were overpowered, uh, very very powerful for that dungeon. So Elfie Apko switched to his Resto Shaman, had no gear. Elfie's Shaman within two runs was far better heroic gear than his Paladin, because that's how it works. 
If that class is powerful, the guild will pile gear into the powerful classes. And if your class isn't so powerful, you sit the fuck out. Because it's about the good of the guild. That makes See, that part I agree with. That makes sense. That's fine. And the other bit makes sense as well. I can imagine if, if I was in the same boat, put it this way, right? You were a healer. Yeah. And you healed your ass to all the progression of Heroic Dragon Soul. And you now the new expansion's coming and you want your DPS gear because you're going to be leveling. You're obviously going to level as a healer. And lol trial comes in, like me, who'd never cleared any of Dragon Soul Heroic. I'd killed one boss on Dragon Soul Heroic. In fact, I didn't. Uh, Marchok was the boss that my old guild killed on the first day. And I subbed myself out. Any of you guys who watched that live stream, I kept saying on Vent, we don't have enough healers on our side. And, they were like, and the raid leader was like, well, I don't know. I was like, look, you don't have enough healers. There's a healer waiting outside. I will sub myself out because I was a Frost DK and there was another Enhancement Shaman in who gave the same buff. I said, don't worry about it. I'll sub myself out. Get this healer in and just see how it works. And he killed it first time. I was like, you need an extra healer. Uh, and that was the only boss I legit killed. So I haven't done anything. So imagine I walk in and I'm wearing, looking for raid gear and well below Firelands heroic level gear and the trinket drops that you need for leveling and you've cleared the place 19 times, you ain't going to pass it to a trial. Especially with the amount of trials a guild like Method gets because they get 30, 40 ad, 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 uh, applications a week, something like that. And they trial maybe 80% of them to see if one in 10 is going to be decent. They kick out, God, are you going, what are the guys saying in chat? Do they understand what I'm trying to say? Let me go and have a look. Let's have a look. <sighs> Keep talking. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, no, I haven't got any gear, but the, the trial's going okay, I think. I'm starting to speak to a lot more members. Uh, my PC stopped crashing, which was awesome. Um, all, the, all that's missing at the moment is sort of, uh, what I'd like to do is storm the meters on a fight, but I'm just not going to be able to do it, unfortunately. Uh, even if I got the maximum gear without getting the legendary, I'm still going to be at least 1.5 to 2k DPS behind the same class, which would be Sparko. And Sparko is an extremely great Warlock. Uh, I was chatting with him on Skype for probably an hour or so the other day. We were talking about Warlocks and other stuff. Um, and he's a dedicated, purely, he'd been playing it for years. And for me to speed into that level, I'm working at it. Well, I'm doing the best I can, but I only have one raid a week to sort of really test myself. So I'm getting there, guys. Um, no, uh, apparently, I've been told the trial thread's really quiet. Uh, everything's cool, kosher. The crashes were a problem, but that stopped. I've done a couple of things which I thought were really cool, like uh, pre soul stoning people who I saw were about to be an issue. But I've also made some newbie mistakes for not knowing the bosses. Um, so it's going okay, and nobody said anything. But slowly but surely, it's getting better and better. I just wish I could do some big damage. But I tend to play uh, Demonology a lot because Sparko is obviously geared to the teeth, who's the other Warlock. There's only two Warlocks, me and Sparko. And uh, Sparko is geared to the absolute brim. And so when it comes to somebody having to play Demonology to give the 10% spell power buff, that's obviously me. I'm more useful as a buff bitch. And I know that because I've been a raid leader as well. I know it's more useful to have the undergeared guy doing the less DPS spec that buffs the whole raid and have the top geared DPS guy doing the most efficient DPS spec. If you know what I mean. It's far more makes more sense. So at the minute, I'm a buff bitch. I come along, uh, generally come along. I don't take any gear. Um, I just play along. I fill a raid spot and I provide 10% spell power. It's essentially my role at the minute. That's my job. That's my method trial at the moment. Uh, but I'm okay with it. I understand it completely. I have no big deal with it. I'm fine with it. And I kind of expected it. People were saying, when will you pass or fail? It's not going to be until at least Mr. Pandaria. I can't see any sort of membership status until first content Mr. Pandaria at least. Really, at least until then. Which I think is okay. What are you thinking? You look like you're just thinking about no, the gear. No, that's you know, all I, you're thinking about I'll is tell the you gear. Something. I'll tell you something right now, I'll, and I'll be totally as diplomatic as I can. I'm not going to be my I usual C bomb about it. But I totally appreciate the fact that they're going to want to gear up their most, like whatever classes, um, you know, obviously the biggest raid asset and so on and so on. But if it's not. I don't know, mate. I don't know. I think the fact is, if it's not a direct upgrade for that character, if, like you said, like the example that's sticking in my mind is someone says, "I need that for PvP over you being there." I think that's bullshit. No. If it's PvP and it's nothing to do with PVE progression or anything like that, I think that's bullshit. But on the same token, I can see what you mean in terms of I can appreciate how many trials they get or so on. But I think that, you know, it seems like you're being utilised, yes, but it just seems like they're giving you no incentive. I, I don't need it. I think it's a different perspective if you've ever been in a, a cutting-edge guild. Is those people deserve the loot. I don't deserve shit. I don't. 
Well, how, I haven't how, contributed how, anything to being able to clear that content ever. Well, you're not in a position to because you're here, though. No, well, no, it's not that. It's just that there's no progression to be had. So even even if they gave me that gear, it wouldn't help them in any way. In fact, all it would do would piss off long-term members who have proven they are vital in a progression situation. You've got to remember, these guys are looking for people that not are only good at the. I mean, I'll tell you this straight up: the best raiders in the world are not in the top guilds in the world. Maybe one or two. But the best raiders in the world legitimately cannot commit to what it takes to be in a world first race. Mm. Because we're talking about what the guys need is someone who can take a week off work, at least. And if we can't clear the content in that week, we need to be raiding seven days a week as soon as we possibly can, until the middle of the night probably, to get this content down. That's what it takes to get a world first. No, I, I appreciate that. And I'm if just, you, what I'm saying well, is, it's these people, the people that are in pro progression raids, surely are they not like... Do they not have the gear that they need? Well, no, a healer hasn't... I mean, I'd lose a lot of stuff to healers in general. Um, like, well, uh, is that a direct like improvement for them, this gear? Well, yeah, because they don't have any DPS gear. Because all that will happen during the progression raids is they'll be bombarded with healer gear. They're now looking to going out and actually killing some mobs, playing with their other specs, enjoying the game. As f and then looking forward oh, to leveling. Yeah, okay, I see what you mean. You see what I mean? Sense to me, yeah. And they deserve sense. that loot. Do you see what I'm saying? They're entitled to it. It's not a case of it's a choice of, well, I'm being a bit of a cunt, so I'm going to take the uh, DPS trinkets. But that's it. That that does, and I'm not saying it happens by any stretch of the imagination, but that does open the door to say, that could be better, I'll take it. And that's fine. No, it's not. It does. My being geared up does not help the raid. The people who've been there and taken weeks off work in their real life and committed to being there for every single night to be in progression. You've got to imagine how many times 500 wipes on Ragnaros Heroic. 500, one after the other. Spine of Deathwing, days and days and days of wiping continuously on the most boring boss ever developed by Blizzard. Spine of Deathwing Heroic. And these guys were there through it all. They don't complain. Well, of course, some of them complain. Uh, you know, if you've been there for yeah. hours and hours. But they're not complaining. They're there and they're helping and they're playing to their utmost. They fought Bellarock Heroic in Finance Heroic. You tell so you try and tell somebody who stayed up till seven o'clock in the morning, wiping consistently on one boss until they finally got that kill as the sun was rising outside, that the trial who has never cleared the dungeon in his life is more entitled to that item than you are. Not gonna happen. Never gonna happen. Don't cry, because you want the loot. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm thinking I mean that's that is a very like that is a very extreme <coughs> circumstance, though. That's how the guild's very extreme. I know, I know, no, I know they're very extreme. What I'm what I'm saying is, is the I, I agree with you. What you're saying is okay. Then um, alt spec gear, yes, they're going to get it over a trial, but it's the, it's all this over a trial, over a trial. What I'm saying is though, that does open the door to it may be a better <coughs> update. For no, no, that doesn't happen because you're also talking about players who know. Right. Okay. There's none of this, you know. Uh, I mean, it's, it's sort of trying to alter your perspective of how, how the guild works. There is nobody in Method or any guild like that who needs my guides. My guides aren't targeted oh, no, for no, guides I know like that. that. I know but that. It's, not, it's also the same guys who don't know, or who think, well, maybe that's better, maybe it's not. No, they know. It's flat out, they know. They know the maths behind their class. They've worked out well before the instance was released. Remember, you can see the loot well before the instance comes out on live servers. MMO champion and stuff data mines the items. Yeah. As soon as that happens, these guys are mapping out their characters to the fucking millisecond of damage. How can I put... Because you look at Balor Kuroik again. Great example this fight. Method wipes consistently for hours at about 1 or 2%. Right. And they need players who know exactly what will give them an extra 10 DPS. Because right. that 10 DPS is the difference between 6 hours of wiping till 7 o'clock in the morning or killing it when we actually have the chance. And these guys know if that trinket drops, that's best for me. They know if that trinket drops, it's best for them. You've, a good example is the way it works in a guild like that is a, an item will come up. I think a great example of this is the Shard of Woe, which dropped from Sinestra. This item reduced the mana cost of stuff. Um, it flat out reduced the mana and gave you haste on cooldown. Now, it's a mana reduction, so instantly you think to yourself, it's a healer trinket. Reduces the mana cost of things. DPS don't really care about it. Mapping it out and mathing it out, Arcane Mages. Straight up, the arcane mages went, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not only best in slot, it's fucking best in slot by miles. And in general terms, the DPS get a lot of gear early because the faster you kill the boss, the easier the healing is, the yeah, easier yeah. the tanking is. So when the arcane mages, uh, and they all have a forum, 
I saw the topic on the Method Forum about when the Legendary Staff was announced. Every class put forward its pros and cons. And it wasn't like... Some of the posts were obviously like, oh, I, I think I deserve pro. it. Yeah. yeah, I think I deserve it. But you like the mages saying, well, we need to consider, does this double dots effect? In which case, it needs to be Moonkins and Affliction Warlocks. Need to get it first. And the, the general overall consensus, I'm not saying everybody, there's obviously some guys in every guild who went, Legendary, I want it, I want it, I want it. Uh, the general overall thinking, especially with the offices, is how will this benefit the guild the most? And where can we make the best use of it? All oh, right, that Shard of Woe dropped. Let's give it to the mages. Legendary staff dropped. We've worked it out. We've seen the testing on the on the dummies. We've seen how it works. This should go to this. I think fire mages all got their staffs first. And then everybody else got it. Because yeah. fire mages flat out way ahead. And that was just how, that's how it works. What's the chat thinking? Are the guys understanding what I'm saying? Do you, you know see what? the I'm difference? I'm going to have abs like... Hershey bar by the time I'm done. Let me know your opinion on this two sides of it, guys. Okay, that's another one. It's just general chat about like um, raid racing and stuff like that. What, is there any questions you want to know about raid racing? I mean, I've only done it really once during Trial of the Crusader, uh, a little bit during Ulduar. Yeah, uh, that's the what rest I'm is... talking about. David Strickland, chat thinks the ghost is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys, he's. We agree with Preach. <laughs> uh, if you're in a world first raid, you need to be a part of the team. Yeah, people agree. With me? Yeah. So you're on the outside? Is I'm, the, fuck you. You're sitting outside in the fuck. cold on your own, no friends, forever alone. Ooh. <laughs> Sad face. I'm with don't ghost. I'm with you, bro. I agree with Andy. Tits, I'll get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tits, I'll get the fuck out. Is the order of the on. day. I have no idea what Ghost said, but I'm with Ghost. I agree with Ghost. <laughs> you guys are all kiss asses. <laughs> You're kissing his ass. You're kissing his ass, big time. And that's what I don't like. Uh, the last. Uh, I mean, we're going to go on to some other stuff. We're going to talk about the Avengers and stuff in part three. Um, and a little bit of wild stuff but the last thing I wanted to touch on is the workshop and how successful that's been that was cool as shit that because I managed to that's the picture that I put on the Preach Gaming Facebook is because the Wi-Fi was shit absolutely shockingly shit Suzanne was actually sat in the room after the sun just having a rest and um, I got the uh, Preach just gone live on Switch TV and I was complaining because it wouldn't stream she said well let's just go to the internet cafe and we'll all sit down and watch it and have a drink it's just like <laughs> it's like, I love Pete, you. Pete Griffin, when he goes, yeah. <laughs> so I just fucking I potted around, like skipping around and stuff. That's when I took that picture. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was something we talked about months ago, wasn't it? Do you remember I was saying that I would love if people could send me footage of them playing? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. as much as my WoW guides are helping thousands of people, um, it's not usually. And this isn't to detriment to my own videos because you still need to know all the stuff that's in my videos. And I do talk. What I do in my videos is I explain to you what you should be doing. The thing is, putting that into practice is sometimes really difficult. So we finally, it was Pauly PJ, and I thank him endlessly for this. I hope he's in the chat. Pauly was an absolute star. Is Pauly actually recorded himself playing? And we had to do, if he's in the chat, you'll know we had to send each other videos like three or four times. Um, because the quality was slightly different, and I needed to download it and stretch it. I think he uploaded that fucking video like so many times to try and get the first workshop video into me. Uh, and when it finally came through, I was so happy as I downloaded it. It worked, and we did the first workshop, and then it was an instant success from there. I think only a couple of hundred people or 150 people watched the first workshop because they were like, you know, what is this? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the first one was Polly PJ just raiding your Sarge uh, in Looking for Raid. And then he sent me a video for the next workshop. And then the day later, I had five videos of people. I was like, wow, that was cool. Help me out. And then the next day I got more. And at the moment I have like 10 or 15 videos ready to go uh, for workshop stuff. And every one of them has been such a fucking success that I'm just so happy with it. And I think it's something we'll be able to yeah, grow. Yeah, it's picked up really well. And I think as well that needs to be said is, you know, a big thank you to the people that actually had, I'd say, I'm going to say it like this, they actually had the balls to have their video be showed or their gameplay yeah. by everyone who's obviously looking at that and, ca and then can sell can like because scrutinize it and things like that they were open to like listen to suggestion and stuff like that and you know I think that's well, awesome the, the way I've tried to done, do the show is just to make it so it's not about it's not about mocking a player because that's exactly what we're against because I'm sure there's people who watch it and in fact you'll see you'll see if you checked one of the videos on one of the workshops is a member of Inner Sanctum um, who was one of the big top wild guilds posted something like you're so fucking bad here's a tip 
why don't you go fucking kill yourself or something like that and I was like what video was that on? one of the workshop videos uh, and then I, I, oh, I, 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 I did the job while you were away oh fuck it <laughs> uh, I checked the feed and it was all about crying to Michael Jordan and stuff I was like easy money that's all the fucking I called it but those are the top elitist players and this is the attitude we put up with is I did a workshop for Paulie and it was just mocking me for being fucking bad and then Paulie sends a video where he ups his DPS from from being 17th on the DPS to being 7th on the DPS after the first workshop so you know what fuck you for the other guy who's trolling fuck you me. you dick kiss my ass it works do and your then, parents a favour and throw yourself down some stairs but even better the second workshop we did a prop warrior first, and it was basic stuff on the prop warrior about positioning and how it can affect the raid. And some of the guys watching was like, well, yeah, these are great tips, but you know, are they really going to be that helpful? On a six minute fight, after just changing his positioning slightly with exactly the same raid group, over one minute reduced fight length on a six minute fight. A sixth of the fight was reduced just from changing the positioning. That's fucking massive success. One minute less fighting. You're talking about fights that can come down to the second of in rages, and you're knocking a clear minute off the fight through proper positioning. That shows it works. And then Jason, who I believe has made it home, I know it's his son's birthday, uh, has made it, I think he's, I can see him in the chat there, he's right there. Uh, we did the fire mage with Jason, uh, and Jason was, had been given some tips by some other people as well. And, it, and Jason, I think he'll agree, he said, are you sure about this preacher? I've been told some other stuff, and I've been told this by other fire mages. And he emailed me today and he said, Preach, I tried out what you said. And I've now got back into my main fucking raid group. Uh, because I did more than 5 million extra damage on the fight from following what we said. So you know what? I'm not the best at every fucking class. But I know how the game works. And I'm not even saying that I'm the best player now. Because I'm trying to get back to that state I was years ago. And I'm trying and trying to get there. But I know the game in my head. And I know how it should work. And putting it out to you guys, every three workshops we've done has been a huge success so far. I'm so pleased with that. Is that I've got, um, I'm going to try and do a workshop tomorrow, but I'll confirm that. And definitely one next Saturday in between the web shows. I'll do a, do a definite workshop a week on Saturday and I've got loads of videos to go through. And it's awesome that I can do that. I'm fucking so happy that you guys good are sending idea. stuff in. It's a, it's a really, really good idea. The fact that it makes it um, more interesting as well to actually look at other people's gameplay because you can obviously see it from an external source of how people do it and then you can say you know that's good but this is how i do it and this is why i do that and stuff like that it's not just a straight up okay this is what i want to do i'm going to put him here this is what i'm yeah. going to do put him here but then you can say like i can see why you've done that but this is what i do this is why i do that there's so much better that i could here. freeze the play and say just look at this situation and if you think about it this way you'll actually naturally do more DPS. And yeah. that's what I'm trying to get out. And it's going really, really well. I'm hoping it's a series we can really build yeah, on. Yeah, Calistrator. I wish I had one. I seriously do. I was trying to think of a way to doing it. I really was. I think we should take a break and then we're going to jump into some movies and stuff and then talk about a bit more WoW and then take your questions as always. WoW stuff, WoW stuff, WoW stuff. Oh, just really quickly as well. Like We were talking about it. There's there's multiple ways of getting back into a, um, into a class and stuff. And like I said um, before I went on a holiday is once I've done with my hunter which i'm done now he's like he's, he's heroic gear um he's well he's not, plenty enough for mr pandemic yeah he's exactly he's got um you know five man heroic gear and a couple of like uh ray looking for raid items and stuff i'm not going to over gear him i've enjoyed doing my hunter more than my rogue and my paladin so far i have to admit in survival uh, even beast master hunters well. are badass right the, the, i really so love it for, for relaxing it's yeah so love it totally but um i said that i'm going to do my warrior when i get back now I logged. I have a. I had a seventy-two warrior. What what race was it? Tauren. You should have kept him as a tank. I should have made sure. Tauren tanks. But um, but I I just logged him and stuff like that, and I had um the because you, I remember you saying before I went that arms is the best leveling spec. Uh, so I watched the video and stuff like that. But uh, like seventy-two, I just thought, do you know what? It's been that long since I made it. I just all his stuff. I mean, he this was a big help for me as well because all his stuff from. Um, it's professions, which I didn't need from lower levels. I went, see your ass, anyways. I basically went and just sold them for the money and deleted that character. AC, mate, turn the AC on. Well done, mate. I'm not even joking, guys. It's about 800 fucking degrees in here. So basically, uh, my Tauren warrior, I went onto him. I put all his, I sent all his stuff to my main, put them on auction house, sent my heirlooms back, and deleted that character. I can't believe you deleted a Tauren warrior. That's upsetting. But the reason. I like I know, to say oh God, this pounds. looks so good as a tank. They look terrible DPSing, but they look so good as a tank. 
But okay. Oh my god. So I, I deleted my tour on Warrior because not because like I wanted to be superficial. Yeah. <laughs> it's because yeah. I wanted to start from the start. I basically capped the characters that I wanted for Mists um, primarily, and now I thought, right, I'm gonna give a Warrior a shot, but I'm gonna make it from start. So I made a brand new Warrior, Blood Elf Warrior. Blood male. Elf, a Blood Elf male warrior. Fuck yeah. And um, I'm starting from the start, but even now, it's just like, I mean, I, I'm only bloody hell, I'm, I think I'm like level 21 or something like that now. Hmm. But it's just, you know, it's a different way of looking at it because I'm getting the abilities one by one. I can see, right, okay, this is when I'm going to use that, this is when I'm going to use that and stuff like that. And I, I'm so glad that I did that as opposed to, it's, I mean, it'd be completely alien to me if I could. Yeah, but I would, well, I would have, I mean, you can't be full character slot, surely. Uh, well, I've... I know you've got I'm name full, holders. Yeah, I've got... I've, well, no, I've literally got one name holder now. I would have kept the 72 and leveled a new one. And I would have had a Tauren tank because I fucking love them. <laughs> I'm just changing... I my might even, I'm even thinking about... I would love to just log on now and start leveling a Tauren tank. I would love to. I might do that on Twisting Nether to save me having to transfer my warrior. Twisting Ooh, Nether? Well, I'm moving to Twisting Nether in a couple of weeks. Remember, Method of going Horde on the 9th of May. So in a few days, I'm going to be Horde again and have no Alliance characters. Which kind of sucks for the guys that I play with on the Alliance side. I'm sorry about that, guys. I might level something on the Alliance, but with Mr. Pandaria coming, I've got a level 11 characters, including the Monk. Um, I might not do that. <laughs> but we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, it's, um, I mean, I'm starting from the start, and I'm picking it up and things like that, and I'm going to level his arms, and he's, I'm gonna, he's, he's going to be capped before, um, before Mist comes out and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm glad that I did, because the only... I was looking at my other classes... And the changes that have been made since I used to play in Wrath. And there's only a few, a very limited few, that I completely have no clue how to play. Like, I've got an 80 Warlock. If I went into I wouldn't my even Warlock, bother. Yeah. Warlocks have changed so much in beta, I wouldn't even bother if trying If I to went into now. my Warlock now, i just like... Because obviously, as well, Warlocks have a lot of fucking abilities. And they have a lot of macros as well. And I can remember how deep and big my bars were. And I was just, I, just look at, I looked at him, and I was just like... No. Nope. But how are you feeling the warrior now? Um, well, you're not feeling as good as the hunter, I don't think. Well, no, because uh, my hunter, my hunter's capped now, and I'm just really, really enjoying it. I think it's gonna, t it's gonna take a couple more hours to actually get the levels up, get the abilities up, and then, I mean, even from cap to cap geared, there's a difference in gameplay. Oh, yeah. I feel. I mean, like when I'm, I think hunter, when you get stuff like Brostorm, yeah, and you get sweeping strikes, and you get, um, what's it called, Colossus Smash, yeah. I think when you get those things, you'll start to change your mind, but I'm not sure what level you pick them up. I've got to be honest. I think it's... Uh, I'm probably right Especially now. charging combat. It's like 25 or 26, you get Cleave, which is the first... Like, Cleave's garbage in there. Is it yeah, it's not great. But, I mean, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm committed to doing that now. I'm, all I'm going to use my mains for is my Paladin for Transmog, of course, and... Uh, <laughs> what? I love the caps. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's just so much. I love it. We're going to take your questions shortly, guys. Don't you worry. But yeah, that's I'm, I'm, that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to do my fun too. So no doubt you're going to be looking for some ballers to jump in some instances with you. Well, that's it. I've got I've got various people because obviously a majority of the subs are alliance. But there's been quite a few people who've said, and it's incremental, which is awesome for me. Is when you get to this level, we'll do instances. When you get to this level, we'll do instances and stuff like that. It's like, I'm down. Yeah, I'm sure I'm you down. are. I'm sure you're down. And make sure you can let him roll on all your loot, otherwise you'll cry. Who'd roll on my loot? <laughs> Who would dare roll on his loot? Let's take two minutes, my friend, and then let's jump into the end of the show. I'm going back in my mind. That question was, time's coming, guys. Don't you worry, we're going to question said, time. He said, like, who roll on my loot? I'm thinking, you fucking... He's already took, hates you. you. Took the prospect of him rolling on the he loot. He took my Maladeth from Blackwing Lair. <laughs> we'll be back in two.